Amazing. Right. Hi, gang. Hi, everybody who is here live. Hi, everybody who is watching on replay. I always say whenever I record these masterclasses, um, if you're watching on replay, massive gold star to you because I'm constantly signing up for things that I never get around to watch. So if you are actually watching gold star and if you made it here today, massive thank you um, and gold star to you as well. So we are going to get started. Uh, oh gosh, hold on, my phone's going bonkers. Um, yes, how to work in the school holidays without losing the plot. Let's go. <laughs> right. Okay, so um, lots of you will probably recognise Victoria or recognise me, um, but we'll do a quick intro. So my name is Helen. I run Mommy's Gin Fund which um, is an online and face-to-face -face community, started off as a buying and selling Facebook group and then morphed into this massive octopus of good that just kind of goes out with all her little tentacles, helping people. Um, we chat about all kinds of stuff. We support each other. Um, it's just the most amazing community and I love it. I love it. Um, as part of that, um, as well as supporting parents through parenthood, so through No Mom Left Behind. Um, I'm now doing that through business as well, because lots of us work as well as look after children. And um, I've just set up a gin fund business club. Um, so that's it. I've got four kids. I live in Devon. And uh, yeah, that's all of my Motley crew. <laughs> that just about sums up each character of my children in that in that photo there's always a mental little one isn't there I've got like just the crazy little one uh anyway Victoria my darling over to you thank you so much so lovely to see so many faces and names here it's really great to meet you uh, my name is Victoria Tretis I live in Nottingham I'm a certified coach so I work with clients who <clears> want um their own version of balance happiness and success in whatever way that looks like to them. So um, I only have uh, one child, Freya. I've had uh, multiple miscarriages, so I would love to have other children, but I am only juggling one. And I think what you're going to get out of um, this training session is to see how wildly different mine and Helen's lives are, but also how we've kind of carved our own path to create a summer holidays and an approach that works for us as individuals. So please just know as we go on, go through any of this, take what is useful to you, leave what isn't. There is no pressure. It's not like a bingo list. You don't have to get all of the numbers, you know, that nobody's going to win in that sense. Just take what you need and just discard the rest. So we trust you to um, just make the right choices based on what you know to be true about you your family and what you want from your summer holidays as well. Oh, sorry. I've got to learn how to click on the right things. Right. There's people in the waiting room. Let me, this is, I need a VA. <laughs> right, Victoria, you keep talking, my darling. I'll let them in. Yeah. Cool. So there is a, um, a free workbook checklist to accompany this. You absolutely don't have to download it to get the best out of this session. But should you want to, you just go to victoriatretis.co.uk forward slash gin. You'll see this picture on the very left hand side. Um, I had to put a price in, which was really annoying. So please know it is completely free, honestly. Um, and you can just go through the steps to download the checklist. And again, just to emphasize, that is a list of ideas that you may or may not wish to do over the summer holidays. You don't need to tick them all. It is, again, a case of just mm. picking the ones that are most useful to you, your life and your family. Amazeballs. Right. Am I too old to say amazeballs? No, I, I like it. Probably am. No, if you did like a, a flick or something at the same time, then maybe. Yeah, I, I can't even. Click. I think I need to work. I can't even click my feet. Oh, my God. What happened then? Oh, Victoria, why did you put me in charge of clicking? It's fine, it's fine. Hold on. Nothing Hold to see on. here, ever. Nothing to see here. Spoiler alert, that was <laughs> screen 32. Uh, right, uh, just in case that you're all sitting there thinking, oh my God, they're going to try and sell us something. This is going to be really awkward and I hate it. I'm just going to get this out of the way now. Uh, this masterclass is part of the Gin Fund Business Club. I'm not here to do a big sales pitch, but if at the end of this you think, oh my God, this is amazing. This is exactly what I'm looking for. I'd really wish I had more of this, which hopefully you will think. Um, just to let you know, there is a special offer which you can join the Gin Fund Business Club now and you don't have to pay until the kids go back to school. So you get the whole of the summer holidays access to all of the masterclasses um, 
etc that's in there so if you're interested that's cool this is what we do we have tuesday tea breaks where we hang out together we have master classes we do networking you get to come with me and advertise your business in mommy's gin fund um and it's just a really safe supportive space for anybody running their own business so if you're interested send me a little message in the chat or hang around at the end and i'll be very happy to chat to you that's it that's the only sales pitch okay sales pitch done we can move on. Okay, so the first question is, what does a happy, balanced and successful school holiday look like for you? So um, I just want to stress here that like what works for me and what works for Helen is going to be wildly different. So Helen, do you want to explain what your like, or should we come to that in a minute? Are we I'm, I'm to that happy in a minute? to. I'm yeah, happy to. Yeah, let's just explore like what's yours going to look like just roughly from a high level perspective so that we've okay. got that compare and contrast. So I have zero childcare from now until the 5th of September. I've, I'm not doing any live teaching. I'm not doing any live masterclasses. I don't have any products or anything to sell or any launches. So I've wound down all of the kind of active day-to-day -day running of the business. So I don't intend to be doing any of that or very, very little of that over the school holidays. Uh, what I will be doing is in my spare, <laughs> spare time, um, I will be working, trying to work on my business. So that means um, I'm launching a newsletter in September. So I'm going to be doing lots of sort of behind the scenes stuff for that. I'm going to be checking my bank account, make sure I'm not paying for things I don't need. I'm going to be reading books, that kind of thing. Awesome. So mine is slightly different. So Helen has four children. I have one. My other half is actually a primary school teacher. So I could have child care on tap. But the challenge is that it's really hard for me to see them going out, making all of these memories, having all this fun, and for me to be stuck here at the desk. Equally, my other half has a really challenging school uh, a role in a school where children have been expelled from mainstream. So it takes a lot of emotional energy during his working week. So he also needs his school holidays to decompress and have time for himself. So it's about trying to find that happy, balanced and successful holiday that works for, for all of us in each of these family units. Next cool. slide, please. So let's find out, shall we, what's every, what everybody else is doing. So what are your plans? We'd love to, let, to find out in the chat. Uh, type an A if you're going to be working full time, a B if you're going to be working part time, C if you're hitting pause with work, or D, if anybody types D, by the way, you have to take me with them. D, six weeks in Ibiza on your own. Yes. Amazing. So we've got yeah. a good mix of working full time, working part time, hitting pause with work. Nobody's going to Ibiza. I'm secretly a little bit <laughs> pleased about that. We're not at all jealous, are we, if anybody's <laughs> going to Ibiza? So this uh, is good. We, you know what your plans are for the summer, which is amazing. You've already put thought into that about how it's going to work for you. Good, 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 good. And what's great also is the fact that it's a mixture as well. So again, just showing that you don't have to do summer holidays in any one particular way. Right. Oh, God. Left bare neck. We've got a thunderstorm. I don't know where you guys are. Oh, God, this is way back. I don't know uh, what's happening with you guys at the moment, but we've got a thunderstorm in Devon. It's raining. Uh, chucking it down with rain and a thunderstorm, and it keeps uh, knocking out my internet. So sorry, my Zoom is jumping all over the place. Right, go Victoria. It's all good. So thinking about you're working full time, you're working part time, you're hitting pause on your business. Which of these three statements best applies when you think about how you're feeling about the summer holidays? Is it A, cannot wait, B, slightly apprehensive, C, OMFG, send help. Okay, good. We've got some Bs, we've got some Cs. Again, a really, really good mix. I haven't spotted that anybody can't wait until the summer holidays, which oh, there probably is in May. I can see oh, it. Is that, I, I missed it. I missed it. Right it's gone too the top, quickly. The first few people were A's. Love wow. it. I'm an A. Good. I'm an A. Good. Awesome. I love the school summer holidays. 
Marvellous. Right, sorry, I'm supposed to be clicking. Can anyone, I'm just really scared that someone's going to leave me in charge of four kids when I can't even click on a Zoom screen. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like I need some help somewhere. I've heard you right. better at childcare than you are yeah. at slide decks. It's fine. I think it's we've fine. clearly established that this is not my zone of genius. It's all good. It's all good. Do not worry. It's all good. Right. Anyway. So, there's a really good phrase that goes, you can't pour from an empty cup or a wine glass, right? Has anybody heard this before? Just to um, put a Y in the chat if you've heard that before. Um, in case you haven't, all it means is that it's a bit like when you're on an airplane and the oxygen masks come down. I, hopefully nobody's ever been in that situation, right? Um, but it's all about you have to put yours on first before you can help other people. And going into any kind of um, you know school holidays or any kind of juggle, we need to make sure, and we're hoping that we can help you with this today, um, make sure that your cup is filled up so that you are feeling happy, feeling balanced and feeling successful along the way. Um, Helen, if you could just flip to the next slide. So all of the things we do, both professionally and personally, can often be put into these four buckets, these four categories. So we're either doing something for work that is draining or we're doing something for work that is energizing us. We're doing something at home that is draining or we're doing something um, at home that is energizing us. So just a really important here, just on the uh, um, important point on the home bit. So I know personally, I found I find doing stuff around the house quite draining. Right. Um, and one of the things that you'll see on the checklist is that this invisible work, like the cleaning, the tidying, the you know, paying subscriptions, it will always stay invisible if we don't ask for help. So feel free to get the family involved in any of those types of activities. Cleaning can be an activity, you know, that you can do as a family just to try and sh share, share that load, right? But what I would love for you to start thinking about is how can you be doing more stuff in the summer holidays that is energizing, but actually um, maybe not just for your family, maybe for you as well. Helen, if you can just go to the next slide. So if we focus on stuff that's energizing you and is for the home, it might be things like family dog walks, family film nights with popcorn, family meals out. Like these are the things that are for me. But how often are you doing things that are energizing that fill your cup for no other reason than it's just for you? Now, Helen, you've got a really brilliant example of this, haven't you? Um, I do. So I have a thinking chair. So basically what this thinking chair is, is it's a chair out in my garden that is just a chair. But my kids know if I'm sitting on that chair, I do not exist. I do not exist to them. They do not exist to me. So what happens is in the morning, I've had to really, really train them to do this, by the way. So I've had to really, really train them that when I go out and I sit in the chair with my cup of tea in the morning, that is my thinking chair. I'm in a bubble. I do not exist. When as soon as I stand up from the chair, then that's okay. Then we can interact again. And that's really, really energizing for me because I just need that time, that space. I'm very much a time and space kind of person, which is quite difficult when there's lots of children around. Um, but yes, my kids have been trained. I have uh, one of my boys is autistic and he um, does not understand that concept. But what I have trained him to do is come and sit on me he wants to sit on me he can sit on me but stay quiet and that's that's as far as I can get with him but the other three they know to leave me alone completely amazing and I love that with that thing your thinking chair it's completely free you don't have to go on a shopping spree to feel like you're filling up your cup and um being energized so if we just go on to the next slide I would love for you to have a think and we're going to pop you in breakout breakout rooms. We're all friends here. So, you know, please don't feel um, worried or anything or apprehensive. Helen and I, I, if we can sort out the tech, we're going to pop into the breakout rooms as well. And we would love for you to reflect on what will you do for yourself that energizes you? What do you need to see, hear and feel based on your tastes, likes and needs? So to give you an example, um, my other half, um, he cannot be in silence 
Um, if it's not the news, it's music. If it's not the music, it's podcast. Whereas I thrive when it is complete silence. So it's about working out what's working for me and then making sure that I have some time of that for that as well. So um, Helen, do we have something fancy for breakout rooms? We do. I just could you see the concentration on my face? Then? I love it. I love it. Did you see that I looked a little bit like I was doing something technical? I, I could, yeah. I and I appreciated it. So thanks. thanks. Um, um, so timing wise, um, just while Helen does the divvying up of the um, dividing up of the people, if we say yeah. um, it's 20 past now, say, and if we come back at half past, um, just have a reflection, have a chat, what works for you, you know, um, maybe there's an example that somebody else gives that you would never do. And there's another one that you would love to try. So just have a little think. What, what can you do for yourself that energizes you so that we're constantly thinking about filling that cup? amazing right I've done it how was it Victoria did you have anything you want to uh say my darling or yeah of course I think there were some wonderful conversations going on um I'm sorry if I kind of jumped out and back into a conversation at random times thank you for bearing with me on that do you know what I really love so many people want your thinking chair Helen you need to trademark that idea because um that's that's a big hit but I think pretty much every conversation I was in, um, all of the things that people want to do for themselves that energizes them are completely free. We've got things like. Oh, you Oh, oh God, well, I think Victoria, you, I think Victoria. I just muted you. Me, it's cool. <laughs> but so they're completely free things like, you know, reading a book, going out for a walk, um, going out with a dog, having a bubble bath you know, they're not massive, they're not big, they're not extravagant things. And it could even be that doing like a 15 minute yoga session twice a week is better than doing um, or more useful to you than skipping that yoga class for the week as well. So it doesn't need to be big, doesn't need to be grand. What's the smallest chunk of time that's going to make a difference to you and your energy levels? And actually, just to add that when I branded my chair, the thinking chair, that's when the kids kind of got on board with it. Before then, I was like, this is my chair. When I'm sitting in this chair, you're not allowed to speak to me. But as soon as I said, when I sit here, it's because I'm just thinking about something. And then when I finish thinking about it, then I can come and play again. As soon as I called it the thinking chair, it completely changed the dynamic. Right. We have another question. Do you want to, shall I ask this question? Right, come on then, right. Let's get it out. Let's get it all out in the chat. Let us know in the chat, what are you dreading most about the summer holiday? Okay, what are you dreading most? Whack it in the chat and let's see. Let's just get it all out, let it out. Right. Yes, overwhelmed, kids fighting, kids squabbling, complaints of being bored. Yes, yes, mum guilt, oh God, yes. Yes, lots of people saying, feeling overwhelmed. Amount of food, oh my God, they never stop eating. You've got teenage boys though, Bex, it's gonna be even worse in your house. Uh, kids unable to agree on what activity not having enough time off to hang out and do stuff with the kids, constantly saying in a minute, um, not being available for fun stuff. Oh my God, all of the meals, Jill, all of the meals. Uh, finding stuff to do for free. Oh my God, trying to get the kids to the clubs without a car, not enjoying the clubs. Yes, oh my God, Lucy, are you me? Lucy and I appear to be the same person. She said, feeling that we should be doing cool things, but the kids just want to watch TV and eat. <laughs> I think we have the same kids there, Lucy. That's so true, isn't it? I know that's the case for so many people where it's like, but I, we've, I've got all these amazing activities and all you want to do is watch YouTube. I think I would say, you know, kids are knackered. Kids are, they just want to sit on the settee. I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Um, juggling them getting to the grandparents. Yes, yes. Yeah. So everybody is, <laughs> Natalie said, she's worried she's going to dislike her kids by the end of the holidays. Natalie, you might be the only one brave enough to say it, but you're not the only one feeling it. Let's just say that. Uh, right, amazing. So keep typing those things in. 
because we're going to get into some proper top tips now for trying to reduce this overwhelm, trying to help you feel like you can um, get as much done in the minimum amount of time. So let's start getting practical, okay? Feel free to keep sharing in the chat. So we have some breaking news, breaking news. A very important announcement. It's not that I finally worked out how to use Zoom. It is this. Multitasking is a load of bollocks. Sorry if you've got kids. Uh, announces Helen, me, mom, 45, feels 90 from Devon. Yes, multitasking. So lots of us, we feel overwhelmed. We feel like we've got too much to do. We're worried about trying to keep up our job and keep our family and keep our own mental health all at the same time. So what we do is we go, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to multitask. I'm going to do lots of things at the same time. And it's going to be brilliant. Oh, my God, I'm a genius. I'm going to do all these things. I'm going to get 10 times as many things done in this tiniest amount of time. I've cracked it. No, ladies and gents, you have not cracked it. I'm sorry. I hate to break this to you. I'll tell you why. Because here's me posing. Can I just say, little aside, as I was posing, taking this photo, my husband drove past in the car. This was on the school run in the street. And he gave me a lot of abuse out of the car window. But this is what happened to me when I tried to multitask because I thought I was a genius. I started off multitasking in inverted commas. That led to burnout, which led to a breakdown. So top tip, gang, multitasking does not work. Something else I want to say about multitasking, which I could rant about for hours, but I'm going to try and contain it. Multitasking is part of this patriarchal nonsense that women are super women. And if we, we are the only people who can multitask and we're so skilled at multitasking that therefore we should be the default person to do everything. No, rubbish. This is an excuse that members of the uh, patriarchy I nearly said something else. Uh, you, not all of them, some of them, culture, culture, our culture, our society tells us um, that multitasking is the answer to everything. And if you can't multitask like a boss, then you're obviously not good enough. You need to try harder. No, no, just no, just no. So there's this amazing doctor, Dr. Sahar Youssef. She is a neuroscientist who studies multitasking and she studies the way that the brain works and she studies your brain's ability to jump from task to task, okay? I'm gonna read this because it summarizes everything into one quote. And she says, multitasking is a myth. In reality, it's rapidly switching from one task to another and back again. Every time you make that switch, you pay a tax for your time and your energy. So that reason it is always more efficient to monotask. That means do one thing, move on when you've finished so you don't pay unnecessary switching taxes. So Google this lady, Dr. Sahar Youssef. She has a YouTube channel, which is fascinating. There is another amazing doctor, Dr. Sophie Leroy. And she, again, did a load of research and she discovered that our brains have this thing called attention residue. And what that basically means is that when you, you're focusing on one task and you're doing great, da, 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 it's got all your attention. When you switch to another task, i.e. when you try and do two things at the same time, you leave a little bit of your attention still in the first task. So you're doing your work, 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 work. oh yeah, I'm just gonna quickly order this, do the Tesco shop at the same time, hold on a minute. Da, da part of your brain is still left in the first task. Then when you move into the third task, you've left part of your brain in the first task, part of your brain in the second task. Now you get into the, th so every task you do, you're diluting your brain power. So this is an actual picture of me. Here's me sitting in my chair, my computer. So I would have a, have a guess that my actual brain capacity at the moment, what with the menopause, with age, with the heat, with my kids is probably about 15%. So if I'm switching tasks, I'm constantly trying to do lots of things all at the same time, I'm losing my brain capacity. And what happens is there's none left for me to become a millionaire. So this is not good, okay? So what this means, gang, 
is monotasking. Okay, monotasking is where it at, where it's at. Monotasking means you are going to do more things well. When you do things, you're going to make less mistakes, and your work will be better. Your time with your kids will be better. Your time on your own will be better. So monotask. Right. How do you do that? Okay, your phone, your laptop, your house has do not disturb features. Use your do not disturb features. You can do it on your phone, on your laptop, on Slack, if anybody uses Slack. Um, on Teams, you can do it. You can have an out of office on your emails that says, don't speak to me until Tuesday. Um, or literally stick a sign on your door, stick a sign on your head that says, don't speak to me, I'm doing this at the moment. Now I find I have a to-do list and I keep it next to me at my desk because I'm monotasking. I'm going, right, I'm gonna do this until I finish. But my brain, because I'm constantly worrying, is constantly interrupting me. Yeah, but what about this? What about that? What about this? You've got to do this. You haven't done that. No, 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 no. So by having a piece of paper next to me, what happens is I can scribble those thoughts down. I'm going to show it to you now. By scribbling those thoughts down, this is what mine looks like. <laughs> what happens is when those thoughts come into my head, I write them down immediately. So I say, thank you, brain, for reminding me of that. I don't need it right now. I'm going to put it on this piece of paper. Then it's not bothering me. And I'm not trying to remember it. Because if I try and not write it down, I'll just, it'll keep nagging me. So I do that. Now, this is something Victoria and I differ on. So if you want to really focus on a task, you need to find the best time of the day when you are not going to be distracted. The time of the day when your brain suddenly clicks into work mode. So for me personally, that is in the middle of the afternoon. I always thought I was a morning person, turns out I'm not. My brain, I need to sort out all the other jobs, do all the other things, clear the dishwasher, sweep the floor, fold the washing, pick my nose, whatever it is I need to do, I need to do all of those things before my brain will let me do my work. I don't know why, it's really annoying, I wish it didn't happen, but it does. So that's how my brain works. Now, Victoria, my darling, come and tell us. Victoria's brain is very, very different to mine. How does your brain work, my darling? Yes, I think this is a really good example about how we are so different and there isn't a right or wrong or a good or a bad um, and interestingly in one of the breakout rooms somebody said that they got up really early um, I can't remember their exact um, wording but they said well you might find it a little bit odd or, or something like that and I'm thinking don't find it odd at all because it is not um, out of the ordinary for me to get up at four o'clock in the morning and do six hours work which means I'm then finished at 10 and I have the rest of the day to myself that early start is is easier for me than trying to do a late night I can't I'm not productive um, in an evening you like don't ever ask me to go to a party because I'm terrible in in an evening when it comes to energy levels but the benefit for me is that I know I work best when it's quiet I'm uninterrupted um, and in the morning so that just ticks all of the boxes for me in terms of my energy levels and productivity while also balancing the family commitments as well during the school holidays. Did you know what I love? I sent Victoria an email last night at something like 11.47 p.m. <laughs> and she replied at 5.20 a.m. And I just think that is the perfect example of how we both work. Completely different schedules. But that works for me, works for you. Uh, I like to get my kids out in the morning so that I can tick that off my list. Right, they've left the house. They've done something vaguely wholesome. And now I whack them in front of YouTube for the next three hours whilst I do some work. Uh, right, breaks. Breaks are your friends. If you want to really concentrate on something, schedule your breaks. It seems counterintuitive to say if you're really, really busy, you've got lots of things to do, have a break. But I promise you it works. Small ones during the working time and then big ones in between your work. So I mean, like in the evening or take a morning or a whole afternoon. Staying hydrated, I sound like my mum, but it's so true, like water helps you concentrate. Uh, oh, I've gone backwards, hold on. Okay, now there's different ways of managing your time that work well for different people and depending on what you want to do. One is Pomodoro technique, which probably lots of you will have heard of, that basically it's like a time blocking. So you block out 25 minutes, you focus on this one task for 25 minutes, then you have the five minute break, 
Then you do 25 minutes of work, five minute break, 25 minutes of work, five minute break. Or now this is a good chap to Google, Cal Newport. He wrote this book at the top called Deep Work. And it's all about how to really, really get really deeply focused on what you're doing. And this works better for me. I'm much better if you give me a two hour window and I will really get into it compared to flitting every 25 minutes. But again, it's a personality thing. It's a what type of work you're doing thing. It's a time thing. Uh, and lock your phone away. Now, you cannot give your work and your kids both your undivided attention at the same time. So one at a time, one at a time. That, I know a lot of people in the chat were like, I'm really worried that I'm going to keep saying in a minute, in a minute, in a minute, in a minute. Try and find a, a way of doing it that you can only be working or only be looking after your kids because I promise you, you'll have better quality time with your kids and you'll have better outcomes for your work. How are you going to do that? Whack them in front of a screen. Nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. Childcare swaps, working wonky hours, like Victoria was just saying. My new favourite thing is a juggle party. Somebody in Gin Fund suggested this to me. I've named it juggle party. I'm going to copyright that. What that basically means is you get a little group of you, three or four adults, bring your laptops, the adults work, the kids play together, interacting with each other whilst the adults are working. You've got a little team of adults, you can help the kids, you can go in, you know, take it in turns to sort out the kids, happy days. Uh, go to soft play, love a bit of soft play with a Wi-Fi. You can use your nap time, give them an activity that takes a lot of time, like Lego, something like that. Or shock horror, maybe your partner could look after their own children whilst you do some work. I'm just gonna leave that there. So multitasking is not always bad. There's some good examples here. So you can listen to a podcast whilst you're on a dog walk, watch a masterclass in the bath, replying to emails maybe whilst you're a passenger in a car, creating reels whilst the kids are wait, wait, waiting for the kids to go to sleep. That's what I do. I take photos all day. I have to lie next to the kids whilst they fall asleep and I do all my editing whilst I'm doing that. Okay, that's my rant about multitasking. <laughs> I liked it. I think it's good. Monotasking for the win. It makes a lot of sense. And particularly, for the win. If we think about the mental loads that women primarily carry in terms of all of that invisible work and all of those tasks, certainly getting stuff out of your head and onto a to do list can just lessen that massively as well. Um, OK, so next section is keeping your business ticking over while you're not actually at the desk or at the soft play. So I've got some really quick, actionable advice for you here. So first things first, make sure that you tell your clients and customers what's going on, what is expected of you in terms of your working hours. So, for instance, I've um, sent out calendar invites like on Tuesdays and Thursdays. These are my hours on the other days. These are my hours. And I've also said, like, this is what is an actual emergency. If there is a genuine emergency where your business is losing money and I am the only person to help, then you can contact me and this is how you contact me. You might not want to do that at all. It's entirely up to you. And again, it goes back to there isn't a wrong or a right or a good or a bad. You choose how you want to run this um, over the summer holidays. If the holidays haven't started yet, then you could put your any wonky working hours or any time off in your um, email signature as well so that people are getting that subliminal message about when you're taking the time off. And make sure you are blocking out any electronic calendars. So I have different booking links where coaching clients can book in with me. So I've made sure that I've already blocked that time out so that I don't have a double booking or I suddenly need to come back to the desk or find Wi-Fi just to do that call. Um, a question in the chat, how do you manage your own expectations of how much you can achieve in the time that you have have to work? So I... I thrive personally on structure, so I will come to the desk and I will know how many hours I am going to be working that particular day, and therefore I know how much work I can realistically fit in. Helen's also got some really good tips coming up where you can kind of identify between the important versus the urgent, so I think you're going you're gonna to love that. Um, also, have a think about, like, what is good enough over the summer holidays? For me, Good enough is everybody's got through the day. Um, okay, we've had a bit of a beige um, dinner of chips, chicken nuggets, and maybe a slice of cucumber on the side for a bit of greenery, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. 
then if we think about like the next level up, what is a slightly better day? Okay, everybody's fed and watered and, and still alive. But what one thing would you want to do? Maybe it's like, okay, maybe we spend one hour of family time together. Maybe we sit down and we watch a film. What would a best day look like? Everyone's fed, watered, um, you're spending some quality time together and maybe you're going out for the day and having a family day, making some memories, taking some photos. So what I want to try and demonstrate here is that there isn't just one version of success when it comes to the summer holidays. There are different levels of success in every aspect of our life. And if we can think about what is acceptable and what is the bare minimum, then we can layer other things on top of it so that it doesn't matter how our day goes, we are always achieving our minimum version of success. Next slide, Helen. So if you network in Facebook groups, one of the things that you can do on the Facebook app um, is go to your, um, like go to write something, edit your profile, and then you can tailor your bio based on who that group is. So let's say if I was in Helen's um, Gin Fun Club, which I am, I could put like a little line in that bio going, oh, Hi, Gym Fun Club members. I've got something really special for you. Um, you know, I do this, this and this. Head over to victoriatretis.co.uk forward slash gin for your free download. So I can tailor that content so that if I am networking in Facebook groups, even when I'm not there, people can still follow those breadcrumbs and work out who I help and and um, find out more about me as well. So this is about doing that marketing for you when you're not even at the desk. If you could go to the next one, Helen. So another thing is like making sure that you're using all of your real estate on social media um, profiles. So again, thinking of these breadcrumbs, if I'm networking in a Facebook group, I want to link to my business page on my personal profile, because if I've joined that Facebook group with my personal profile and I'm adding value to those um, members by sharing my knowledge or giving some advice, if they're curious about me, they're going to click on my name. And what I don't want to give them is a complete dead end. I want that. I want them to be able to take the next step, which is to click on my um, my business page. So then again, they can find out more about me. Uh, this is an example as well of my LinkedIn banner. So we've got links on there. We've got a recommendation and we've got my website. So again, if somebody is looking at my profile um, and I've not directed them there, they can self-serve. And this all takes them to that image on the right, which is like a, a click this link in the bio style page where they can self-serve. They can book a call when I'm next available. They can download something to get on my email list and then go into, um, you know, the weekly emails and everything. So it's just a really nice, non-pushy, organic way for people to self-serve, but also go through your marketing so that you can get more leads and sales ultimately as well. Next slide. There we go. And then what you can do as well is if you've got your out of office on, which I strongly recommend if you do um, do a lot of work that uh, relies on email, leverage your out of office notification as well. So if you've got an email newsletter, put a little line in there with the sign up link so that anybody getting that autoresponder is directed to that newsletter. Same for your latest blog, same for any of your podcasts, for any of your marketing. So make sure that you're leveraging that out of office so it's doing your marketing for you automatically. Next one. This is you, Helen. C'est moi. C'est moi. Sorry, I was just trying to get a link. So I was trying. Do you want to put your link back in the chat, Victoria? Because it's gone quite a long way up. I'm just thinking. I'm just um, I'm aware that we're whizzing through these slides quite quickly. Um, but this information is on that download that Victoria mentioned earlier. So um, if you haven't already signed up for it, Victoria is going to put a um, a link in the chat now. So you don't have a lot of time in the summer holidays. We don't, we really don't. So we have to think about how are we spending the work time that we have and how are we spending the time with our kids? So it's all about quality, not quantity. So you need to be really clear when you sit down ready to start work, what are you doing and why are you doing it? So you need to be prioritizing, in my opinion, the work that brings you money. So sales, i.e. DOSH, inquiries, i.e. future DOSH, and signups, i.e. long-term DOSH. So if you remember that school holidays is only temporary, it's only six weeks, okay? It's only, I know it feels like forever, but it's only six weeks. 
So for in that time, you're not going to be able to do everything you could normally do. You're not going to be able to do all of the things on your to do list. So you need to pick and choose which are the things that are going to make you money. Remember your work. Some of the things can be automated. They can be delegated. You can cut back on them. They can be binned. They can be shared. They can be deferred. So if you look here, here's Dusty Bin, just showing my age. Anybody old enough to remember Dusty Bin? Am I the only one? Uh, ask yourself when you sit down and you're using your precious limited minutes to do your work, do I really need to do this right now? Like, do you? Do you really need to do it right now? Or is it something that could wait until September? Is there something else you could be doing that is going to move your business forward in a better way than the thing that you're doing. I'm look, talking to myself now, because I like to fanny about on Canva. So my question to myself is, is fannying about on Canva the best way for you to use this one hour childcare slot that's magically appeared? I would suggest that it's probably not. So let's think, so what could you be doing if you've got little snippets of time, if like me, you're not gonna be in your business, working really hard on the day-to-day client-based work, or selling of your products, what could you be doing? So you could schedule your social media posts, you could write some future newsletters, you could write the copy for a future launch, which is what I'm gonna be doing because my newsletter comes out in September. You could be commenting on other people's posts. What about all those business books you keep on buying? Maybe you could read a couple of them. Maybe you could batch create some social media content, videos. Videos are your friends. They're quicker, they're easier. They've got better reach. And um, don't be doing all those editing ones, just a quick video. You could write a blog. Check your business bank accounts. Again, note to self, I'm paying for God knows what out of that business. All these subscriptions and things I thought I needed, I don't need. If I've got a spare half an hour, why don't I go through the business account and sort out all of my direct debits and all of that. Catch up on some masterclasses. We've all signed up for masterclasses that we haven't actually made it to. Why don't you watch them? You could revisit or write your business plan or your quarterly goals, or you could research some new product ideas. There's lots of things that you could be doing that are not working full on in your business, serving your clients and selling your stuff. There's lots of other things that you could be doing just with those snippets of time. Um, Jill, are you all right, my darling? Did you want to say something? Let me just unmute you. Thank you. Um, I, I just had this really helpful tip, which I heard a while ago um, from Christina Cosmic, and um, just to end your day by writing a to-da list, which I really like, because I think we focus so often on the to-do list, and then we beat ourselves up at the end of the day but actually taking five minutes to write down all the things you have achieved that day can really end the day positively. So I just wanted to share that. I love that. I love it. And also um, gratitude lists as well yeah. work really well. Like five so items a day. I always make sure that's on my to-do list. I have to write five. <laughs> I love it because you're quite right. It's so easy to get to the end of the day, any day as a parent, but especially in the summer holidays and go, well, I fucked that up, didn't I? But actually, I guarantee you didn't cock up the entire 24 hours. There might have been moments where things went a little bit squiffy, but you did not cock up the entire 24 hours. Like, That's just made me think of that advert, and I can't remember where it was for a few years ago, where it was like the mum's interpretation of the day versus the kid's interpretation of the day. Do you remember that one? And like the birthday cake fell over and all this sort of things. And then they were like, we had a cake fight yeah. in the kitchen. It was awesome. And it was just like so much. I love that. Advert. I can't remember where it was from now. It's so true though, isn't it? I mean, it's, you know, that the day when you ran out of milk mm. and you had apple juice on your mm. cornflakes, that's probably your kid's favorite day for the entire summer holiday. So yes, those expectations and just being kind to ourselves when things do go a bit, uh, squiffy right uh we're just coming to the last five minutes now chaps so victoria's got an activity for us to do 
Yeah, just um, future pacing now. So we're going to imagine that we're at the end of the summer holidays. Can you share in the chat what three words you would like to use to describe your summer? Um, I'm going to have a think. Helen, are you going to do yours as well? So three words you would like to use to describe your fun, <laughs> funner, sun, summer. Oh, fun's coming through strongly already. Reconnected, regroup, revitalize. Fun, relax, cheap. Love that one. Fun, productive, relaxing. Relax, fun, reuniting, fun, revitalizing, balanced, balanced, connected, plus question mark. Love it. Love it. Balanced, joyful, calm. Amazing. Amazing. Not busy, fun, enjoyable. Yes. Ever the optimist. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So we've got a whole load of different answers here. Fun is coming through really strongly with all of this. Oh, Helen, that was my note to you when I was trying to, it's like, can you let me in the Zoom room? So my last question is- No idea how that ended up there, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I could see you were on that slide earlier. I was like, can you just do this? So the final question for you is, What's the one thing that you can do this week that will move you closer towards achieving that summer that you've just described in the chat? What's the one thing that you can do? The smallest thing I would love to know. So mine was, um, let me just scroll up. Mine was fun with photos. What's the smallest thing I can do this week is probably ask Freya and Adam what fun looks like for them so that we can pull together a bit of a collated list. And that'll be Free activities, paid activities, rainy day activities, a whole load of stuff. Complete the worksheet. Yes, Lucy, I like that. Thank you so much. Um, any other thoughts? What's the one thing you need to do this, you can do this week that will move you closer to achieving the summer that you just described? And if you can't think of anything now, don't worry. It's just planting that seed of an idea. What can you reflect on to help you move forward so that you do create that summer that you want and that you feel happier, balanced and more successful as the end of the summer holidays comes to an end. So do the yoga session. Yes. Look up free activities locally. Yes. Order toys for the paddling pool. Helen, you don't have a paddling pool. You've got a swimming pool. Let, let's just you know, call a spade a spade. Um, plan fun for Mondays, the day I don't work. Yes. Get more organized. Yes, exactly. So it all starts there. It all starts with the smallest of steps. And that's everything from me. Helen, over to you. I love it. So what is next? So please do get this free checklist. Honestly, it's got loads of summary of, of all the tips and advice that we've given um, throughout the session, along with some extra ones that have come from both of our communities. Um, if you are interested in the Gin Fund Business Club, I would love to chat to you. Um, you're very welcome to hang around now or you're welcome to DM me or email me. There's more information about um, the club on the Mommy's Gin Fund website, which I'm going to put in the chat as well. And finally, please be kind to yourself because you are only one person and it's not physically possible for you to work like you don't have children and look after your children like you don't have a job like it's just not physically possible to do it you cannot do everything for everybody all the time oh, thank you victoria um we've I've established i cannot multitask so i cannot type and talk at the same time and as we were saying earlier it's those times where things do go a bit wrong that actually turn into some of the best times in the holiday and you know what, if you miss an email, if you forget a deadline, it's going to be okay. It's, it's going to be okay. Victoria, any, any words from you, my darling? 
I just thank you so much for for joining us live today. I know it's a really hot and uncomfortable day. And if you're watching the replay, thank you for watching all the way through to the end. We hope that you found it useful. And um, like Helen said, our DMs are open. If you've got any questions, thoughts, comments, observations, absolutely here for you. Just tell us what you need. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Right. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Um, like I said, if anybody wants to talk to me about the club, I'm going to hang around now. Um, if not, have an amazing summer holidays. I hope you cool down and um, we'll see you soon. Bye, cool. everybody. Thank, thank you, you, everybody. Thank you.